This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In 2021, Max has already proven that he is going to be one of the toughest drivers that Lewis has ever gone up against. And so I thought it would be interesting to look back throughout Lewis's career at his toughest title rivals. Now, I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part will be me ranking Hamilton's title challenges. And then at the end, I will try to explain and kind of give my opinion in terms of where Max fits into that list. Now, I'm only going to be ranking the drivers that went to a title decider against Hamilton, so that means that Seb with Ferrari who went up against Lewis in 2017 and 2018 will not be on this list, but a different version of Seb will be making an appearance. Now, there is obviously a balance when comparing drivers across a career that has lasted over a decade, but the important thing to know is that I'm only comparing how good those drivers were in that specific title challenging season and what effect those drivers had on Lewis as well. So, let's get into this one. I must be honest that whilst I was researching this video, I almost forgot that Mark Webber was in the 2010 title decider. Now, Webber and Hamilton didn't really have that many head-to-head -head showdowns that season, and although 2010 was by far his best ever season and the best chance he ever had in his career at winning a title, the reason why Mark to me is Lewis's weakest title challenger is that although he had the best car in 2010, to me personally, I think he lacked some consistency in the very early part of the season, and between all of the drivers who came into the final race with a chance to win the title that year, I don't really think many people would rate Mark over the other drivers. He still had a great year with some career-defining performances like a dominating weekend in Monaco, and also the famous not-bad-for-a-number-two driver win in Silverstone, but nevertheless, in my opinion, he is the weakest driver on this list. The main reason why I consider Fernando Alonso at McLaren in 2007 as one of Hamilton's weaker title challengers is because Fernando really should have won that title against a rookie Lewis Hamilton. In terms of Fernando's season, although he was a top quality driver and there is no doubt about that, Lewis did outqualify him in his first ever season and really did look like the stronger driver of the two. Now, there were a lot of things going on behind the scenes that didn't allow Fernando to feel fully comfortable within the team and didn't allow him to really perform to the best of his abilities, which is something I've talked about in a very recent video that I'll have linked below. But there were still races where he could have got more points, there were incidents that cost both him and his teammate points, and in the end, although he did push Lewis hard, I think Lewis being able to compete with Fernando, who was the defending double world champion in his first ever season, only gave Lewis more confidence. So, although 2007 might not have been Fernando's strongest ever season, and it definitely was not his cleanest ever season, both on and off the track, we do still have to remember that he, along with Lewis, only lost the title by one single point, so it wasn't as if Fernando was bad, he just wasn't Fernando at his absolute brilliant best, in my opinion. Now, before we move on to the next driver, I want to say a quick word about the sponsor of today's video, who are Squarespace. If you're looking to build your own website using an easy to use platform for your personal blog, your online store, or maybe even a portfolio for your work, then Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you. You don't need any experience in web design, there is a huge amount of guidance, the interface is also very easy to use and they have a bunch of incredible templates that you can start using right away. It only takes seconds to drag and drop the pictures that you want, change the fonts, titles, design and color of your website and in no time like you can see on the screen as an example, you can have a blog ready to go. And there is even a feature that shows you what your website will look like both on desktop and also on a phone as well. Now, if you are interested or just curious, then head over to squarespace.com and just have a play around with the web designer. You don't actually have to pay anything, it's all free to use, so you can just kind of let your creativity run wild. But then if you do want to make your website go live to the rest of the world, you can then use my code ALDAS or use the link at the very top of the description to save yourself 10% on your first website or domain. So once again, a massive, massive thank you to Squarespace. Thank you. 
There is no doubt that if this list ranked the unluckiest drivers to ever go up against Hamilton, Massa would comfortably take the number one spot. Once again, this championship came down to the two drivers being separated by just one single point in the most dramatic title decider of all time. 2008 was by far Felipe's greatest ever season in Formula 1, and although he wasn't perfect across the whole year, it was a few reliability issues like in Hungary and incidents of bad luck like in Singapore, where he left the pits with a fuel hose still attached to his car which ruined his race, which in the end cost him the title. Make no mistake, Felipe definitely pushed Hamilton all the way, but I think he was also helped by the fact that Hamilton himself in 2008 wasn't the Hamilton that we know today. Both drivers throughout the season had quite a few poor weekends there and there in terms of performances, which in the end could have cost either of them the title, and that is the only reason why Massa doesn't make it a little bit higher on this list. The best way to describe Kimi Raikkonen in 2007 is by saying that he was the silent assassin. What's funny looking back is that Kimi led the championship after winning the first race in Australia, and then he never once led the championship again after the first round until he won it in the final race in Brazil. Now, I'd actually argue that in terms of raw pace, Hamilton and Alonso were arguably better in 2007. But there was two things that won Kimi Raikkonen in that championship, and they were experience and consistency. All season long, Kimi was right there, picking up podiums, staying out of trouble, and then when McLaren started to struggle in the second half of the season, that is where he was at his absolute best, picking up a podium in each of the last seven races, with three of them being wins. He might not have pushed Lewis psychologically, but he showed a masterclass in picking your battles, staying out of trouble, and capitalizing on your rival's poor weekends. I've decided to talk about Seb and Fernando in 2010 at the same time because, to be honest, you can have them in whichever order you want, and to me, there would be a good argument on both sides. But the reason why these drivers are here is because, although Lewis had a good season in 2010, and he did go into the title decider with a very small outside chance of winning it, given that he was 24 points behind the leader going into Abu Dhabi, both Seb and Fernando were the class of the field that year, and during a chaotic season, they were the ones that were the most consistent, they were the ones that minimized their mistakes, and whilst Red Bull definitely had the better car, Lewis just couldn't match the levels of pace and consistency that both Seb and Fernando had in 2010. There is no doubt that during that chaotic season with multiple title challenges, Lewis was a major factor and he was the best driver for his team. But despite all of the drivers having bad races, in the end, the best two drivers were Seb and Fernando, and Lewis, despite some bad luck, just wasn't on their level throughout the course of the whole season. To me, there is no doubt that so far Nico Rosberg still remains to this day the strongest ever driver who pushed Lewis Hamilton the most, both on and off the track. We've seen drivers be better, worse, or as good as Lewis in title battles, but Nico to me was the only driver that ever really got into Lewis's head. Their rivalry was legendary, and the fact that they had a dominant car for three years meant that it was only ever a dogfight between the two of them. It also meant, however, that there was zero room for margin, and unlike in 2010, or even to an extent now in 2021, whenever either of them had a bad race 99.9% .9 of the time, the other driver was always going to grab the win. And it was that psychological inter-team battle combined with their incredible driving abilities and that relentless consistency that in 2014 and 2016 took both titles down to the wire, with each of the drivers winning one title from the deciders in Abu Dhabi. I've said it before that losing to Nico in 2016 made Lewis a better driver, and that Nico winning his one and only title against Lewis Hamilton makes it even more special. It's these things combined with their intense rivalry and the fact that they were teammates, which to me puts Nico as Lewis's strongest ever title challenger so far. But having said all of that and looking at 2021, where does Max fit into this list? 
Now, of course, to clarify, Max still has to get the job done and actually take Lewis to a title decider. Because the one thing we've learned from Seb versus Lewis in 2017 and 2018 is that it's not how well you start a season against Lewis and Mercedes, it's how well you finish and how hard you can push them. So, taking into account what we've seen so far, in my opinion, I would put Max in that fourth spot just behind Nico, Seb, and Fernando. He's definitely matched Hamilton for all pace this season, which is what easily puts him ahead of the other drivers, but the thing that he needs to do now to become Lewis's strongest ever title rival is continue the incredible form that he's been showing, take advantage of every little mistake that Lewis and Mercedes make, and he needs to start challenging Lewis mentally, which which will only happen if he continues to do this for the rest of the season. That's the most important thing, speed and consistency. Although we've had a great start to the season and although we do have a mega title fight brewing, Max and Red Bull can't start dipping off during the midpoint or towards the end of the season to the point where we look back at the beginning and ask ourselves, what could have been of this title fight? Max Verstappen has the talent and he now has the car and the potential to become Lewis Hamilton's strongest ever title rival, but he needs to be there at the end of the season or maybe even get the job done before we even get to the final race in Abu Dhabi. So there you have it. Now let me know all of your thoughts in the comments box below and also let me know where you guys would rate Max Verstappen amongst the other seven drivers who Lewis has already been to a title decider with. Is he better? Is he worse? Is he already the best driver Lewis has ever had to fight for a title with? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments box below. I can't wait to see what you guys think. And once again, a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And if you do want to save 10% off your first website or domain, then use my code ALDAS or use the link at the very top of the description. So once again, a big thank you to Squarespace. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video and if you did, then don't forget to drop a like and smash that subscribe button. We are so close to 100k, so yeah, hopefully we get there soon and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.